Hey, welcome back. In this video, I want to start talking about centroids of simple shapes because that's going to lead us into the concept of having distributed loads on structures. So up until now, we've been looking at structures subjected to pretty arbitrary point loads like this, but what happens if we place a shape with some dimensions and weight on the beam instead like this? Well, its center of mass is going to become important to us. So as long as gravity is assumed to be constant, then the center of mass is going to be the same as the center of gravity. And for bodies of uniform material and thickness, then the center of gravity is located at the center of area, which we call the centroid. So for simple shapes like squares and circles, which are symmetrical about two axes, their centroid is right at the center of the shape or at the intersection of those two axes of symmetry. Now for shapes with one axis of symmetry, like semicircles, they're going to have their centroid somewhere along that one axis. And shapes with no symmetry, like some right angle triangles, have centroids closer to one end of the object than the other. So if we go back up to our beam here with a square on it, assuming the square is uh, of uniform thickness and material, then the centroid of that square is going to be right in the middle, and that will also be the center of mass. Now we can use the center of mass uh, to solve for the reactions in a case like this. So let's actually change the dimensions here a little bit to make the numbers easier to work with. So uh, we know that we have this, the weight of this whole object is 10 kilonewtons and its mass center is right here. So basically we have a resultant force that's going to pass straight down right through that mass center or centroid of uh, 10 kilonewtons. And then we can just use that. We can actually see that the distance here from A to that line of action of that force is going to be seven plus half of this. So it'll be eight meters. So if we take our sum of moments about A, then we're going to get uh, what we have here. We have 10 kilonewtons times eight meters is going to be equal to CY, or I guess BY, sorry. By times uh, this total distance, which is 10 meters. So if we just solve for that, then we'll just get that By here is equal to, uh, it's going to come out to 8 kilonewtons. And then with the sum of forces in the y direction, we're going to find that Ay is going to be just that other 2 kilonewtons. So there we go. By knowing where the centroid was of some shape of a known weight, uh, we were able to actually find the reaction forces at point A and B here. So that's pretty useful. Um, if this shape would have been a triangle that you know started in the same place and ended in the same place, but was a triangle shape, then its centroid actually wouldn't be in the center. It would be shifted over to the right. And if you look at this diagram, it's actually one third of the way away from the tall side. So it would have been over to the right a little bit. And if that triangle also weighed 10 kilonewtons, then the line of action of this force would have moved. Uh, and that would mean that our reaction here at B would be a little bit bigger than 8, and our reaction at A would have ended up being a little bit smaller than 2. So knowing where centroids are is important for problems like this, uh, where we have, where we start getting into uh, talking about putting distributed loads on beams, and we'll get to that in a couple videos. But yeah, that's just an example, uh, an introduction to what centroids are and why they're important. And I think in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'll work through maybe one or two examples on how we actually come up with these numbers for, for some of these shapes about where the centroids are.